audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. Navigating through the tough seasons of life with Dr. Michael Youssef on Leading the Way. In the valleys of life, we experience the presence of God in a way that you could never experience it any other way. You grow closer to God in a way that you could never grow when you are on the mountaintop. It's in these valleys that you come to the realization that God makes all things beautiful in His time. It's in these valleys that you begin to learn to develop a confidence in the living God, in the love of God, and the care of God like no other place. It's easy to look back on experiences in life and see the big picture after the fact. Things that were unclear or unbearable at the time have more meaning in the rear view mirror. Well, today on Leading the Way, Dr. Yusuf invites you to listen to the words from King Solomon. He shared powerful insights as he looked back on his life, as he calls it, under the sun. If you're able, turn to the third chapter of Ecclesiastes in your Bible or app. And follow along with Dr. Michael Yusuf on this episode of Leading the Way Audio. We all have equal amounts of time. Every one of us. We are given each morning 86,000 seconds, 1,440 minutes, 24 hours in a day. Every one of us has exactly the same amount of time. Listen carefully. You cannot carry forward your time that you did not use from the day before. <laughs> you cannot take credit for the time from the day before. In two days' time, tomorrow will be yesterday. In 30 minutes, the future will become the past. What we do with these equal amount of hours and time that God gives us is of uttermost importance. How we divvy up the hours that God has given us is of uttermost importance. How we dedicate the time that God has given us every single day is of uttermost importance. How to prioritize our time and our hours that God has given us as a gift is of uttermost importance. I want you to hear me right on this one. What makes time to be very important is the fact that it is irretrievable. That's why it is irrepeatable. You see, instant replay is only on television, not in life. And it was that fact that time is irrepeatable, that time is irretrievable, that caused King Solomon to focus on time and the importance of time in his life and the meaning of life, and why he came to that conclusion about the meaninglessness of life. I want you to turn with me, please, to Ecclesiastes chapter 3. There he concludes in the very beginning there is a time for everything. And at this time, as Solomon experienced both living under the sun and then living above the sun, he comes to certain conclusions, and throughout this book, he talks about what it is like under the sun and what it's like above the sun. What is like under the sun, what is like above the sun. When he experienced life under the sun, he said life is meaningless, life is monotonous, life is purposeless, life is empty, life is unfulfilling. Ah, oh, but when he began to be lifted up to live in relationship with God, when he began to see things from God's perspective, when he began to see things from eternal perspective, he realized that life can be joy-filled life. It can be purpose-filled life. It can be fulfilling life. Yes. You know, one of the things that God taught me, that when my life has a purpose and that purpose is articulated, and when that purpose is written down, I, and I believe in writing, so I write down. So I write books. I write things down. When that goal in life is gotten through time with God, through discerning the will of the Holy Spirit in your life, and when you have that articulated, that purpose helps me and will help you to eliminate the unnecessary, to eliminate all the clutter in life, to eliminate all the distractions in life. But that's not all. When that purpose is articulated in life, 
It will help you expand, expand the important, expand the lasting, and expand the everlasting. And today, in my life, just about everything that I do is governed by my life's purpose. Life is too short, and I'm not going to waste it running around chasing rabbits. (laughs) Let me urge you, if you have never sat down and under the power and the authority and the guidance of God, the Holy Spirit who dwells in you, and say, God, I am going to take time. I don't care how long it takes. If it takes a day or two, three or four, it doesn't matter how long it takes. Stay with God until you discern your life's purpose. And once you have that life's purpose articulate, your prayer life will be changed. Your effectiveness will be changed. Everything in life will be changed. You see, many people think, when you read this book of Ecclesiastes, there are many people read this book and think it's a morbid book. (laughs) They say, this is a doom and gloom and pessimistic book. It is the opposite for me. Why? Because I try to live where? Above the sun. I don't try to live under the sun. I live where? When you live above the sun, you'll see this book from different eyes altogether. You will see the message of this book, book of Ecclesiastes, that God wants us to have a joyful life. That's the message of the book, that God wants us to have a fulfilled life, that God wants us to have a purpose-filled life, that God wants us to be His and His forever. Even though sometimes in life we experience opposites, as we see in the first eight verses of chapter 3. Lots of opposites. I think it might be 28 of them. We experience joy and we experience sorrow. We experience life and we see death and so on. We experience birth and we experience death. We experience time of sowing and then we experience time of harvesting. We experience a time for renewal. Doctors would tell you that all the cells in your body except to your brain cells, they are changing every seven years. (laughs) What you are now, not the same person that you were seven years ago. For new cells to come in and grow in your body, that the old cells have to die. There is time to die, time to live. That's what the writer is saying here. There are times when destructive friendships, uh, when destructive relationships must be torn down. And there are times when good and wholesome and godly relationships need to be built up. And the rest goes on and on and on. He said, for everything has a season in life. Listen carefully. Hear me out on this one. You cannot appreciate and even comprehend these different seasons in life. And we all go through them. But you will never appreciate them. You will like some and hate the other. But in order to appreciate all the things that God brings in life, in order to comprehend His purpose in these different seasons in life, you must be living under the sovereign control of God. For the believer who is living above the sun, even the tough times, and we all have them, have purpose in them. They have purpose in them. Even the Arabs, they have a saying that too much sunshine creates a Sahara. (laughs) We need the rain, and we need the sunshine. A couple of years ago, when I was invited to go to Turkey to preach there, and then I had an opportunity to go and see one of those manufacturing plants that makes this beautiful oriental tapestries. And, and I learned something. I'm always looking for some biblical thing, some spiritual thing for everything. <laughs> and I realize that when you look at these people working from the back, there are a lot of threads and a bunch of jungle threads, and it, looked, it doesn't make sense. But you come right in front of it, and there you see a beautiful piece of oriental tapestry. And they are all put 
together by different strands and different experience. There is the gold of success, and there is the crimson of suffering, and there are the somber hues of sorrow. All together make a beautiful tapestry, and those who live under the sun can only see those threads, the jungle threads, and that don't make sense. But those who live above the sun can see the beautiful work of art that is being produced in your life and in mine. Ah, from the back end, that tapestry (laughs) is a life under the sun. But from the front end, it's a life lived above the sun. It's an exquisite piece of art. No wonder the Apostle Paul said in Romans 8, you know, a lot of Christians know that verse. (laughs) And, And I want to tell you, if I have to translate the Bible I would not have translated that verse the way it is because a lot of people just grab that verse and God works everything together for God. I mean, they glibly, even when somebody's suffering, going through a painful time, instead of understanding what's going on, no, God works all things together for good. I just said, shut up. (laughs) The first word ought to be, now for those who love God, (laughs) that really should come first, not last. For those who love God. Those who live above the sun, God works all things together to produce a beautiful tapestry. Even the Son of God was not immune from suffering and pain in life. He was a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief because he knew that the resurrection is going to follow the crucifixion, and therefore he was joyful. He was contented. He was thoroughly surrendered to his Father. And there is the verse in verse 8 that trips a lot of Christians. And I want to take a moment just to dwell on it for a few seconds because it's important for me to explain. Some people really kind of jump and say, well, what does that mean? There is a time to hate and time to love. Is there a time really to hate? Yes. Hate the sin that causes human degradation. Hate the sin that causes confusion in the minds of people, especially the young. Hate the sin of those who hurt young children. Hate the sin of those who pervert justice in our courts of law. Hate the sin that those who call good evil and evil good. Hate that sin. He said, there is a time for everything, said the searcher. And then he comes to his great discovery, verse 11. I want you to look at it carefully. Verse 11. He said, He has made everything beautiful in His time. Only those who live above the sun can truly say that. Only those who have surrendered their all to Jesus Christ can truly say that. Only those who trust God with all of their hearts in the tough times, in the testing times, in the diseased times, in the sorrowful times, those who trust God with all of their heart can say that. Only those who know they have been redeemed and they are on their way to reign and rule with Christ in heaven can say that. For those who live under the sun... They live in darkness, and they don't know what light looks like. And therefore, they have no knowledge or experience of those who live above the sun have. They curse their enemies because they can't love them. They curse their jobs because they cannot see that it's a gift of God. They curse a lot in life because they don't know what the believer knows. But those who are living above the sun know, what do they know? Listen to me very carefully. That God is bottling every tear of theirs in heaven. That God is treasuring every sorrow for their growth. That God is using every difficulty in life for His glory and their good. That God is molding every challenge that they face for their good and His glory. That God is carrying every burden with them and for them. That's what they know. And that is why they live above the sun. Those who are living under the sun will never understand the power of living above the sun until they come and experience it firsthand. And the invitation is for everyone to move from living under the sun to living above the sun. Beloved, many of you know this, and like like all of you, I've experienced raw fear, and I've experienced ecstatic joy. 
When I experienced sorrow of losing my mother at an early age, I truly thought my world has come to an end. But it wasn't. God was using that in that big tapestry, and I was lifted up by the power and the wings of her prayer for me. In fact, of all the valleys I have experienced in my earlier years have compelled me to write the book of God is in control, and that has blessed thousands upon thousands of people. Some actually received the call to go to full-time ministry as a result of reading that book all around the world. And then for later years, uh, with my wife, we experienced the valleys that came our way. There, from that valley came the book Empowered by Praise, and that too has blessed thousands of people around the world. Why? Because in the valleys of life, we experience the presence of God in a way that you could never experience it any other way. You grow closer to God in a way that you could never grow when you are on the mountaintop. It's in these valleys that you come to the realization that God makes all things beautiful in His time. It's in these valleys that you begin to learn to develop a confidence in the living God, in the love of God, and the care of God like no other place. Now, don't misunderstand me. I, <laughs> I like the mountaintop much better. Than, I mean, look, I don't invite or cherish the valleys. But when they do come, I know that God has a purpose and that in that valley I'm going to meet Him in a way that I've never seen Him before. And every time I grow deeper with Him in the valleys, not on the mountaintops. The reason that Solomon got so depressed and got so despondent and even was despairing of life itself, just think about this, the man who had everything, everything like nobody ever before or since probably ever had everything like he did, and yet he despaired of life itself. He wanted to die. And the reason that happened is because at that time he was living where? Oh, but then when he begins to be lifted up and begins to live above the sun, he could say, He makes all things beautiful. And as Solomon begins to live above the sun, starting to see things differently from where he was living under the sun. In fact, the whole book is contrast. You know, I was under the sun. You see, he was under the sun, then he got above the sun. On this subject, and on this subject, on this subject, on this subject, in this thing and in that thing. And so in verse 10, he said, life is a gift of God. That's because he was living above the sun. Then he said in verse 11, he said, life is linked to eternity, and without that you cannot understand it any other way. In verses 12 and 14, he said, that God can make a joyful life even here and now and in the midst of sorrow. You know, you hear people always say, well, you know, how, particularly in the media, how can God be in control? How can be a loving God? And there's so much evil in the world. I'm going to talk more about that actually in the next message. But listen, the answer is really a lot simpler than you think. Those who ask this kind of question are living where? A person who's living above the sun will not ask that question. Solomon asked that same question when he was living under the sun. He even looked at the courts of justice. Remember, he was a wise man, and he gave good judgment. And so he went and observed the courts of his kingdom, and he looked and saw what the judges are doing and what the lawyers are doing. And people tell me today that the lawyers tell me it's so miserable now that they've seen people literally lie under oath without batting an eye. And he went to the courts of justice, and he saw what was happening. There's a miscarriage of justice, and the law is being perverted, and he got so discouraged. But then he comes out of his living under the sun, to begin living above the sun. And he says, only then he could see those two things. Number one, that God has a time for everything. And secondly, that God is working out His eternal purpose. Yes. 
How many of you believe that God will judge the world? Say amen. Amen. There are very few people actually know that God is judging the world right now. Even though you see injustice, or even though you see perversion, even you see all the persecution of the faithful and the righteous are suffering in schools and in different parts of the world. But God is judging the world now. But just because you have not seen the execution of that verdict, (laughs) it doesn't mean that it had not been pronounced from the portals of heaven. It's already been pronounced. It's a matter of time, but it's already been judged. Those of us who live above the sun, we live by the promises of God, not by explanations. Let me tell you something. Those who want explanations, when you give them explanations, they aren't going to (laughs) work. But we live by the promises of God, not by explanations. And that is why the Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 5, after He gave the Beatitudes, blessed, 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 then He concludes the Beatitude by saying, rejoice and be glad. Why? Because great is your reward. Where? In heaven. Hear me right as I come to an end. Beyond physical life, beyond death, there is eternity. Solomon said, after he compares the animals with humans and he gets discouraged and depressed, he has an awakening and he sees that humans are different from animals. Look at it. He puts it in verse 11. He said, God has placed eternity where? In man's heart. Human have eternity in their heart, and that's what makes a difference. Listen to me. This is a quality about humans that can never, 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 never be explained by evolution. Amen. C.S. Lewis said the following. Listen very carefully. Every word is loaded. He said, Our Heavenly Father has provided many different inns for us along our journey. Ah. Oh. But he takes great care to see that we don't mistake any of them for home. Isn't that great? There may be someone here who is living under the sun and beginning to feel life is meaningless. Life is empty. Life has no purpose. Today is your invitation to come and begin to live above the sun. And here's the test. If you close your eyes in death, can you be absolutely certain that you will be in heaven with Jesus? If your answer is, I'm not really sure, I hope so, or I've done some good in my life, I think that may get me there, then the answer is no. But today, you can fulfill your heart's ultimate longing. Your heart's ultimate longing is you can come and rest on the promise of Him who said, Come unto me, all who are traveling and heavy laden. Come unto me, all the weary ones. Come to me, and I will give you not only mental rest, not only emotional rest, not only spiritual rest, but I'll give your soul complete and permanent rest. And then you can be sure that if you close your eyes in death, you will see Jesus face to face. You're listening to Leading the Way, the solid Bible teaching of Dr. Michael Youssef. If you'd like to speak with someone about spiritual things, how about setting up a conversation with one of Leading the Way's pastors or counselors? They'd be happy to talk with you about any of your questions or challenges. Fill out a short form at ltw.org slash Jesus to get started. While you're visiting ltw.org slash Jesus, May I encourage you to click deeper into the website so you can see how Leading the Way is reaching into lives of people, families, and communities around the world. There are stories of those consuming Dr. Yusuf's audio and video content, connecting with a team member, and learning more about Christ and experiencing life change. These true life stories will encourage you. Learn more when you call one of our ministry representatives at 1-300-133-589 or online at ltw.org, ltw.org. This program is furnished by Leading the Way with Dr. Michael Youssef, passionately proclaiming uncompromising truth around the world.
Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.